Our mini lecture today is on module 27, Emotion. And in our photograph here, to start off our mini lecture, we have the ancient Greek mask that would be used in Greek tragedies and Greek performances and plays, the happiness emotion mask and the sadness emotion mask. And we're going to look at emotion and what it is. So first off, emotion deals with psychological arousal, expressive behaviors, and conscious experiences. And emotion can be in happy forms, it can be in sad forms. The common sense theory is that emotion arousing stimulus leads to a conscious feeling of fear and anger and psychological response. If you see a dog, an angry dog barking at you, you're going to have fear. If you see a happy dog, a little mini one, you're going to have happiness and think, oh, how cute, okay? But see an angry dog, you start to fear, you start to tremble, okay? You're showing emotion that way. The James Lang theory of emotion says that we experience emotion because we're aware of our bodily response to an emotion arousing stimulus. We're aware of what's going on and what's happening around. So let's take a look at this theory. So we see an oncoming car right in front of us. The James Lang theory says that our heart starts to pound and then we have fear set in. So it's boom, 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 fear. Because we have the arousal, which is the pounding heart, the emotion is fear. Okay, so a car's coming, we have boom, and then fear. Walter Cannon's theory, okay, the Cannon Bar theory is that you that a psychological arousal and an emotional experience occur simultaneously at the same time. So we have a car coming. We have the part pounding and fear going in at the exact same time. So we the arousal and the emotional happen. So it's boom, fear, boom, fear, boom, fear. Unlike the previous theory, which we saw boom, 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 fear, this one is boom, fear, boom, fear. The two-factor theory is that a psychological arousal and cognitive arousal occur. Okay, we have two factors. So we're having the pounding heart at the same time you're saying something, so pounding hard, then labeling, I'm afraid, and then fear set in. So here's what you've got. The first theory, we have boom, fear, then boom, fear, boom, fear. Now we have the two factor where boom, I'm afraid, fear. Now I'm not sure about any of y'all, but if something were to happen like this, I don't think we really know what's going on. It all kind of happens, boom, right there. Okay, and also a lot of people might not necessarily just say, I'm afraid. You'd see somebody saying some other things as well. The autonomic nervous system is what, what goes on with that fearfulness in us. The divisions that occur. The, for, uh, the peripheral nervous system that controls the glands and muscles of internal organs. So this is why you do certain things whenever you do... Um, when different emotions set in. So you've got an arousing division and you have a parasympathetic division, a calming division, okay? So the sympathetic nervous system is where you have to deal with, are you gonna fight it or are you gonna fly? Are you gonna run from your fears or are you gonna face your fears? It's kind of like the sound of music where Maria is in the abbey talking to the, to the um, Reverend Mother and the Reverend Mother says, you must not run away from your fears. You must face them. Okay. And here's what you got sympathetic. Are you going to fly away or are you going to fight it? Okay. Your body is going to deal with that. Okay. So parasympathetic is where you've got the autonomous nervous system that calms the body, brings the body back to in a relaxed state. The, uh, the um, sympathetic is where your body gets aroused up. You start to get all jittery and everything. The parasympathetic brings it back down. This is how our body changes during that time. So as we can see with sympathetic, we got a dog, an angry dog jumping at us. Our pupils are going to dilate. Our salivation decreases. We have dry mouth. We start to sweat. We have perspired skin. Um, we have our, we start to basically sweat a lot. Um, we, our heartbeat starts to go really fast. We don't feel like we could eat or anything and that we have our hormones go crazy. After it's, it ha happens, our pupils contract, 
we it, our salvation increases, our skin dries out, we have our respiration, our sweat decreases, our heartbeat starts to slow down, digestion comes back into place, we feel like we can eat again and we're ready to go. These are things that happen, okay, with us. I remember going and defending my master's uh, portfolio I did. I have a master's degree in educational technology and I will never forget sitting outside the room waiting before I had to go in there and meet about it and I started sweating. Um, I would, did not feel like drinking any water even though they had it there. I just couldn't do any of that. After it was finished, a relief went off my shoulder. I didn't have to worry about it anymore and it was totally done. Um, and it was a great feeling. Things happen like that. And I'm a history major. And one thing that I remember looking at is whenever Prince Charles married Lady Diana Spencer in 1981. And a big thing was you read about what she did that morning. She had her sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system who were going totally crazy. There are things that she said. She said she didn't feel like eating. She didn't want to do. She was sweaty, balmy. All this happened before she married Prince Charles. Of course, if you're about to say your vows in front of three and a half thousand people, it's pretty nerve-wracking and everything. But afterwards, she was fine. Nonverbal communication is a big thing with emotion and how people show emotions. Um, sometimes nonverbal communication can say a whole lot more than verbal could. Facial expressions are nonverbal communication. Tone of voice is nonverbal communication. Hand gestures. If you cross your arms, and some of you are actually probably doing that right now when I said it, but when you cross your arms, that shows dissatisfaction. Facial expressions, not smiling, shows dissatisfaction. Smiling shows happiness. Tone of voice. If you are, um, let's say that you're talking to a dog, and you can look at a dog, and you can have the nicest voice. You can say, oh, look at you, aren't you cute? Or you can say, look at you, you tiny little varmint. I cannot stand you. The dog's going to be like, ha, 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 and, you know, patting with his um, mouth. But if you look at it and you're yelling, you say, you are the cutest dog I've ever seen. That dog's going to back up. Tone of voice. Dogs don't understand English people. Okay. And they're going to back up and be able to do that. You have nonverbal communication, body language. That's a big part of emotion and showing emotions. Okay. And finally, gender. Women are better at reading nonverbal communication of emotion than men are. It is very plain and simple. Men also don't show as much emotions as women do. Okay, big thing to take into place. And that today is our mini lecture on emotions.